How are you? I'm good, I'm good, thanks. Hi. <clears throat> oh, yes. right, guys, we will start with the broadcast section with no embargo, mm -hmm. followed by an embargo section for 10.30 p.m. tonight. No live tweeting during the broadcast section, please, and phones on silent, and use microphone provided. Michael. Thanks, Hi, Andrew, you right? Good, thanks, Michael. Um, just get the team news ahead of the game yeah. against Newcastle, please. Um, so, uh, where are we at? Uh, the main ones, I guess, uh, uh, Dom Solanke, um, close, but I think we'll, we'll err on the side of caution. He won't play on the weekend with the international week. We're kind of um, made decision to, to wait till after that. Uh, Benton is all good. Um, he's trained uh, well gone through all the protocols and uh, most importantly he feels really good training wise and uh, the other one this week was Richie pulled up sore well, I think there's a there's an injury there muscle injury which is just getting more information but he'll be out as well um, I think that's it okay uh, mixed bag then <laughs> yeah um, obviously deadline day um, mm. done some really good business Dominic Solanke Archie Gray Wilson a few others Lucas from January is that it now, do you think, in terms of incomings? Yeah, I think so. I don't think, uh, unless something surprising uh, jumps out at us uh, in the last 11 hours uh, or whatever it is. Um, but no, I think that's it for us. Just seen the Europa League draw. Some cracking ties. Rangers, I bet you can't wait for that one. Got right. Yeah, yeah. No, um, no, exciting. Uh, good to be a part of it. And uh, yeah, some some good games. And yeah, I'm sure I'll get a warm reception, reception that uh Ibrox, they'll be looking forward to seeing me, yeah. Let's hope it's still at Hamden. <laughs> um, in terms of that, though, the squad, obviously there were some injuries last season with no Europe. If there are no incomings today, though, are you are you happy cover-wise, the odd injury here and there? Are you, are you overall happy with the strength of the squad and the yeah, size? Yeah, look, we, we, you know, look if, 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 if nothing else happens, I mean, there's still a couple probably uh, will be moving out, but if, if nothing else happens, then um, I think it's been another positive window for us. I think, as I said, uh, all along you want to go into every window and sort of come out the other side of it, uh, you know, in a... In a Stronger sense, I certainly feel that. Um, you know, I think the players who bought in are, are already making a short-term impact, but even for the longer term, I think, uh, um, you know, are going to be really good contributors for us. Um, I certainly, I think we've got a, a better sort of well-rounded squad to deal with um, Europe and the extra games and, and, you know, whatever injuries we have. And um, so, yes, yeah, so I think it's been a, a real positive window. If that is it, mm. you, always, you always said you can't do it, everything in one window. This is what this will be like your third transfer window. Mm. Looking back from the squad you inherited, a lot of big names have gone out as well. Maybe not mm. sort of fit in your system. Overall, happy overall with yeah, the progress. No, as I said, I'm you know, I'm very happy. I think we've done we've done a hell of a lot of work in the last uh, you know twelve months, three windows, as you said. Um, no doubt the squad's changed. I think the, the demographic of the squad's changed. Um, the suitability to the kind of football I want to play is, is, is certainly we're, we're much better equipped for that. Um, there's growth in the team, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, look, I think, you know, um, we needed to do some fairly major work 12 months ago. And I think in the 12 months since, I think we've gone a long way to, to kind of getting the team to where we want to. Um, but there's still more work to be done. I've said that before. It was never going to happen uh, quickly. I don't think it should happen quickly. I think when it does happen quickly, it's, uh, you know, you're more fraught to getting it wrong. Um, so I think we're in a good place. Charlie. And Shall firstly, we? happy belated birthday. Thank you. I'm glad you remembered. I <laughs> totally dismiss it. And too late, mate. Forget it. Go on. It's too oh, late. Sorry, sorry Michael. Yeah. Um, it's someone else's birthday. It's Eve's birthday today. And it you is. said that um, last week you trained like a child who's been told off. And of course, he went on to score his first first goal last weekend. I just wonder how has he trained this week? And, and in terms of that goal, what do you want to see more from him in games? Is it controlling the passage of play in midfield or is it goals and assists? You know, look, I mean, I, I, and I don't want to be too sort of flippant about it because it, at the same time, you know, it, we've said all along, this is about, um, you know, trying to guide Biss so that he becomes, you know, the, the best version of himself, uh, both on and off the field. And, um, you know, there's no doubting his qualities as a player, I think, you know, from the moment I've arrived, you know, every time he's been fit, I think he's played. So that's how highly I rate him. But at the same time, we feel there's, you know, there's areas of his game 
that he can improve just around sort of, you know, a word I use a lot, his discipline in terms of his positioning, in terms of, you know, the way he plays the game. But a lot of that is, again, you know, there's a correlation to, to off-field as well. And I think, you know, he's been really, you know, focused and, and in you know, since, since the incident and he understands. I, I think him not playing that first game sort of really hurt him, um, as it should. Um, I think, you know, you can find players, but when they don't play, I think they feel it more. And, um, you know, he doesn't want to be in that position again. And he knows that, you know, not just for himself, but for the whole group, you know, he... You know, we need him to be at his best so that he can contribute to the team and he'll only do that if he if he continues to show the same focus and, and discipline he has. And what have you made uh, to the start to the season of James Madison? Because we've seen such a positive start similar to, to last season. Yeah, he's been good, Madison, um, really good. Uh, you know, he's, I think I said last week when Maz, Maddis is physically in a good place, um, knock on wood, and he, he really is. He's, you know, his training's excellent it's consistent um we know he's he's such a you know creative force in this league he's done it for many years so um great to have him back up and running and uh yeah i think he's been excellent the first two games and uh, you know i can see in him that he, he he really wanted he wants to take his game you know up another level and um you know hopefully he can and in terms of Newcastle on Sunday, they've obviously got a really good recent record against Spurs. Um, the game in Australia, I know it was a friendly, but it was much closer. So what can you take away from those games last season going into Sunday's match? Yeah, a bit of a contrast. I thought, you know, obviously here at home, we, we did really well against them. But um, fair to say up there, we we, we didn't. Um, but it was a good good learning sort of curve for us um, that game because we started the game okay, but then you know, we, we conceded and we kind of lost, uh, you know, probably for the first time all year, our composure in a game, and you know we allowed them to score quickly, and <clears throat> you know what it's like up there. The, the crowd created a, a brilliant atmosphere for their team, and we just didn't handle it at all well. Um, it was a good sort of learning curve for a lot of our players who, you know, it was their first sort of exposure to to a game like that, to an atmosphere like that. So. You know, obviously, we want to have learnt from that, um, but it's still a tough game. I think any time you go up, you know, play against Newcastle on their home ground, it's 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 a tough game. Um, you know, they've got some outstanding players in their team. They're well coached, and it's going to be a great challenge for us. Thanks, Ange. Ian. Hi, Ange. And can I reiterate, happy 58th birthday for this week? As some people forgot. Yeah, well, it's my 59th, so you're being even kinder to me. Okay, fine. There we go. Um, <laughs> The Europa League draw, apart from Rangers, which obviously a lot of people will, will look at, there's, there's some really excellent ties, but also it gives you a block of, of eight games. And last season, because Spurs went in Europe and went out the League Cup early, I think bemoaning is a fair word to use. The, the lack of games, actually your team, how you had to get your team to play how you want and, and mix mm. players around. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think I, I said on a number of occasions, I mean, I think people, you know, would kind of, trying to sort of steer me towards the fact that less games means we're sort of fresher for for you know the league which in in some respects that works but it doesn't work when you know like us we had a lot of injuries and we were putting in players who hadn't had a lot of football because we just didn't have the volume of games whereas now you know it allows you now with, with the fixturing to get into a rhythm of knowing we've got two games a week pretty much right through till the end of january for the most part um players within the whole squad will get utilised. So if we do have injuries, we're not throwing on somebody who hasn't played for six or seven weeks. Um, and like I said, it allows you to get into into a rhythm. So, um, yeah, it means less training time, but you know, hopefully we've had a good training block um, you know, leading up to this uh, sort of international window that sets us up for the rest of the year. So look, I'd, I'd much prefer having a, you know, a program like we have now from now till sort of the end of January than uh, sort of what we faced last year. Do you a fan of the new format as well? Oh, it's interesting. Yeah, I think um, yeah, it'll be an interesting concept. Uh, you know, a couple of extra games, um, the league format. You know, I think it's different dynamics sometimes. You know, in the group stages when it was, um, you know, maybe after three games the whole thing was done and dusted. But I think it'll be alive a lot more now, um, right until probably the eighth game because teams are fighting for positions. So I think there'll probably be less dead rubbers in in European football, which I don't think is a bad thing. So yeah, um, happy to see how it works. In this day and age, players staying at clubs for a long time is relatively 
unheralded. Ben Davis has been here 10 years. Sonny has been here nine, played over 400 games in all competitions. What do those sort of players give to you as a manager in terms of when you're coming in and you're wanting to change as you have, yeah. Like I said, it's 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 a it's a bit of a rare occurrence, particularly you know at big clubs um, where you know players stay for that sort of length of time. Um, but yeah, I credit to the, both those guys that you know they've they've stayed at at this club and played under numerous you know top managers, and they've all sort of rated them you know very highly to keep them at the club. And um, look, they're both. Great guys, I think um, they understand what the football club's about. It's great when you've got you know eighteen year olds walking into a dressing room and you know probably you know, two of the first people who will go and greet them are Sonny and Ben, and I'm quite comfortable in them being their first point of contact because they're they're outstanding people. Start apart from being uh, fantastic footballers, so yeah, I think it's it's great and it's it's only right that you know they um, you know they get heralded in, in terms of their not just longevity but the, the kind of service they've provided finally the important deadline day is tomorrow are you ready to get your Oasis tickets I hear a big Oasis fan yeah no I'll be queuing up mate uh, overnight just uh, no, no great band uh, great music um, yeah not on my radar at the moment thanks uh, Ian yeah, yeah favourite thanks. song uh, no Wonderwall okay there you go <laughs> George uh, Angelo, I mean, you've got no idea how they're going to gel. So when you mm. think about changing so mm. many players, does part of you think, oh, maybe we might have gone too far? Or you think, oh, you, I know you're saying you've heard on the... But is there a risk? Yeah, there is, yeah. But there's risk in everything you do. There's no sort of sure path in any, any which way you go. Um, all i got to rely on is kind of my knowledge and my history in the game that usually, um, you know, wherever I've been uh, and... Fair to say, wherever I've been, I've had to overhaul squads. Um, there's a process that I kind of go through, which, for the most part, works, you know. And that's what you, what I've got to rely on in terms of that. I'm not just saying, well, let's just get rid of ten players and bring in ten players. It's it's a bit more sort of hopefully methodical than that, to, so that we try and get as many right as we can because you're never going to get them all right. You know, I think that's the other fallacy about transfers. People think, oh, you you've got to have a hundred percent hit rate. That that's impossible because if you're bringing every player in and they're great, there's only 11 positions in the team. So there's always going to be guys who are going to miss out. So if you've got a really good transfer policy, it probably means that's at about 70 or 80% because there's always going to be a 20 to 30% attrition rate just because you've got everyone right, you know. So that's kind of the measurements I've always worked with. And, you know, I think while there was risk, I think you can mitigate that risk by sort of sticking to a process. Down to George, please. Uh, Jack, please, sorry. <clears throat> Hi, Ange. Um, do you feel like you've been backed this window? Yeah. And in terms of the age profile that you were talking about, w was that always the explicit plan from the start and how important do you think that is for the club? Yeah. Um, well, it's part, it was definitely part of my plan uh, because I think when you're trying to build or rebuild a team, you've got to, yeah, look, uh, all managers hope they're there for the long term, but the reality is that, you know, you don't know how long you'll be there, but I've always kind of tried to build teams that will last, you know, over a cycle, which is, you know, three, four, five years. So you need, uh, as just a, a sort of natural um, consequence of that, you, you, you're looking at a younger demographic, a team that will grow, that will improve, that will, um, you know, adapt to the challenges ahead. So, um, like well, I said, uh, when I got here, it was a team that I, you know, even from a demographic point, point of view, looked like it was at the end of a cycle. A lot of players who kind of had had great careers but were kind of either ready to move on or getting to the end of it. So that combination with, like I said, a different approach, um, for me, it was definitely part of it to go younger. Um, so before you got here, Spurs didn't really have many young players in the team, but now there's a lot of guys here aged between 18 and 23. How does that change the feel around the place and how does it change your job? Um, it doesn't really change my job, but, you know, I guess young people bring an energy to it and, um, you know, they're, they're excited to be here. They're excited to be at this football club, excited to be playing in the Premier League, I guess, and, and excited by the challenge ahead. And I think it's a good environment. They've they've come into because the senior players we do have are you know all guys who are still very very motivated and, and ambitious as well so um and i think 
you know, it allows them to grow together. You know, they, 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 they're all kind of in that similar part of their careers, which invariably you're going to have challenges individually and collectively. And I think if they experience them together, it allows them, I think, to overcome those, um, you know, in a better way. Finally, do you think it's easier to teach your style of football to a younger player than to a 30-year-old? No, it depends. It just depends on the player, you know. It depends on the mindset of the player. Um, you know, I think Sonny is as much a, a willing learner as Archie Gray, you know. I think it just becomes down to the individual. Um, I think it is sometimes easier with younger players because obviously they're you know, a little bit more open to, to maybe doing things a different way. But I think in the current climate of you know, where the world's at with young people, you still, you know, it's not like me, I just tell them what to do and they do it. I think those days are long gone. There still needs to be a narrative of why we're doing what we're doing. And young players now want to be coached. They definitely want the information. They, they want to know why they, you know, I'm asking them to do certain things. But again, I enjoy that aspect of it. Okay, finish this section with Ali, please. And um, just want to ask you about the centre backs department. Uh, looking from the outside, obviously last season, uh, Davinson Sanchez moved on, and you were left with three natural centre backs, and then others that could kind of fill in. Kind of feels like maybe Radu Dragishin has, has swapped in terms of numbers with Eric Dyer, and maybe you're in a similar position in terms of three natural centre backs. Mm. Is that something? There was any temptation to maybe add another natural centre? No, and I don't think we're in the same position. I think Radu is a different proposition for us, and um, and certainly with um, you know Archie coming back, coming into the group, and and. Jed probably not being in the plans initially, but now in, I think we're in a much different position than we were last year. We've got Ben Davies as well, obviously, who can play as centre back or or uh, at left back. So, um, but again, I mean, that's that's the discipline of it. You know, yeah, we can go out and sign another centre back, but if the right player's not there, I'm not going to do it. That's as simple as that. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I never have, I never will. Um, for me, it's about getting the right people into, and, uh, you know, there wasn't an opportunity for us to bring in someone who I thought was going to add to our group, so we don't do it. Um, we've got Ashley Phillips, we've got like, young Luka Wiskovic who are available again next year, um, two young centre backs. I don't want to block their pathway by doing something now that, you know, um, might look from the outside like you know we've we've got another player but if that player is not going to be suitable to what we're doing not going to fit in why would i bring them in potentially block um you know the the path for somebody else and uh richarlison just want to ask you how frustrating is it probably for him as well as yourself that he's just never really got a rhythm as a spurs player yeah that's that's and that's a challenge i guess and it's something we've got to look at again um he's been in that cycle for quite a while him predating me i guess and um you know we've put a lot of thought we, we took a really sort of conservative with him um you know this time you know he didn't play in any of the preseason games you know, he's really only played 20 minutes of sort of first team football um but again you know obviously he's had a setback so it's something we're just gonna get and go sort of back with Richie and, and sort of work through the steps now of getting him back up and running um, because you know when he's fit um he's such a handful even last week that 20 minutes he played you can see um you know the the kind of yeah, you know, the options he gives us in that position, but um, you know, it's it's frust- like I said, frustrating probably for him uh, as much as anyone else, but frustrating for us too. But you know, it's a reason we we kind of bought Dom in the, you know, but obviously he, he picked up a, an injury in the first couple of games. But um, again, you know, it's it's something we'll work with Richie with. Apologies for a bit of a hypothetical, but if Lascelles and Regulon don't get moves, is that a situation where you just kind of have to integrate them back into your squad, or does it become a little bit of a problem for you? No, it's it's no. They, they don't have to get integrated back to the squad. I mean, it's, it's their decisions. I mean, I, you know, I kind of it's pretty clear where they sit in terms of where we are as a squad and where we are as a team. Um, but you know, but I've never been one to force people out. They've, they've got decisions about their own careers and what they want to do. And um, you know, if they're still here, they're still here. We'll, we'll work around uh, that um, scenario. But it, it certainly won't affect uh, the way we work in the first team. Okay, we'll end the broadcast section.